that we are live. Now I'll have, I actually have a video up and we're like displaying my webcam here and it's going to be garbage, but we're going to do this anyway. So tonight we have the inimitable Beacon Fire joining me here. Say hello to everybody, Beacon Fire. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Well, so we're going to, here's our format, everybody. We're just, we're wanting to just go through a bunch of display power cards. And there's 116 cards in the set. And I don't know if we're going to make it all the way through in this one go. We may try and do this in a couple of uh, takes then. And who knows when the next one will be. But we're just going to rock this as is and see how it goes. Um, well, of course, beginning with the very beginning, the uh, amazing new Darth Vader. Uh, and by the way, we are not going to read through all the text. We encourage you to follow along at db.swdrenewedhope.com if, uh, if you're doing this ex post facto, like on YouTube or something. And if uh, you want to, you can uh, follow, us, follow us along there and then just go through. And we're not going to read every single thing and talk through every single die side and you know give you this explanation. We just really want to get into more of the meat and potatoes about what we think about these cards, what we see this doing. In, in the meta as quickly as possible and uh, and trying to you know hit the high points as opposed to getting down in the weeds with every single card. Um, so the long-awaited Darth Vader, though. Beacon, what are you thinking about this guy thus far? Have you been built with him yet? Um, I mean, I built with Newt once I saw Newt yep. spoiled. Um, I mean, it seems like an automatic pairing to me. Uh, yeah, especially with Crucial Intel right off the top. Yeah, exactly. The, the free plot that every leader gets. Yeah. Um, it, I, I have, I've gone back and forth, though. I actually have played against him like four times already, and I haven't lost. Uh -huh. But I've seen people dominate with him, so I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's questionable. Like, I, I love him, but I think there, there's a possibility that he could be a trap. And so there's a question in my mind as to like exactly the way this needs to go. Because if you try to lean too much into the like the kill mill strategy, do you lose out on kill? You know, and uh, I, like that's kind of my concern. But what with um, what with some things like Sith Master giving you some like an extra character die out of it, and the fact that Darth Vader's lightsaber is on the reprint list, and is Fear and Deadman on the reprint list too right now? It is not. If it were, I'd yeah. probably feel a little bit stronger. About yeah, it. if that ever comes back, I think that makes for a very interesting new discussion. Um, but as it is, I'm I'm excited that he's here, but I'm also wondering if there might be other opportunities with doing more like, uh, you know, what what about just going with Ozil and getting a profitable connection out or trying to get, you know, uh. Or not profitable connection in that case, probably more like path to mastery, I think, right? Because it'd be nineteen and nine, and then two. So yeah, I think that that's another option. Like you're just going with a nine point red, and then f like really leaning into the trying to get the apology accepted going. Um, that seems pretty swell as well. Yeah, and that one's because I, I think the thing with Newt is Newt is potentially the target. Because yeah. of the fact that he's he's so um, annoying. Hurt. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and so even though his die sides are terrible, but uh, yeah, I think if you're gonna go with the with the reset, I think Ozil's the better way. Yeah, I'm 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 curious about that and how that will proceed. And there may be other things, other options as well that makes even better sense down the line that we haven't seen yet, but. That's about all I got to say about that. Is that I hope he's not a trap, <laughs> but well, he will. I think we will see him. Right? Oh, we're definitely going to see I'd him. Be, <laughs> he's a big I, boy. I would be very shocked if there wasn't at least six to seven. Of him well, on, and on do you think? Turn. Do you think this is there is a problem? Like, remember when uh, when uh, uh, transformations Vader flip side of Annie um, went down to nineteen? Like that was a problem, right? Because he could be played with Savage. Do we just have a big enough card pool we don't have to worry about that anymore, do you think? Yeah, because I, I was actually thinking about Savage with him too, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I think they're just too... I, I just like some of the other characters that are yeah. a little cheaper. Yeah, it, it just it's it's a good question. I, I don't know what we're going to end up... like How that's going to end up panning out. All right, well, let's think about... He's not a pansy. I mean, he's right, definitely not a pansy, right. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true but the pay side always hurts and the fact that we don't have the two resource side like the old or the uh, across the galaxies vader i mean you don't expect that to you know make it back into the mix without a 
23 point dude at that point but whatever uh fifth brother so this guy is a 13 pointer um he's the par parallel die from the way of the force uh fifth brother um i don't know this is this guy's real interesting so you activate him, you turn, you choose a character in an opponent's pool, a character die in an opponent's pool, then you force that die to be turned to a blank. If they can't, then turn one of this character's character dice to a die showing a spe to a side showing a special, and the special is just deal two damage to a character. You may remove a die showing a blank. So basically, if the opponent has already rolled a, a blank character die, you activate this, get through the special. Now they like have to re-roll, or else that die is going. Like it's gonna it's gonna be gone, <laughs> so that's kind of so, cool. Yeah, I tend to I tend to think he might be the best Inquisitor we have right now. That's wow. Okay, that's interesting. Well, because I mean, I mean, look at it like the the one melee side is probably yep. his work side, other yep. than a blank, and his abilities pretty good, uh, and he's thirteen points. I mean, anytime you're small, can you know has two side two two sides is pretty good. Well, this pairs, of course, super nicely with the Grand Inquisitor. And in that case, you don't have any pay sides, right? Yeah, um, exactly. And then the, the specials and the, the blanking. I, I don't know. I yeah. I actually like him a lot. I haven't looked at him to build a deck with him yet. But yeah. I, just looking at him really quickly, I think he's pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, this this can, like, the, the soft mitigation component here is pretty nice. Um, because, like, it ma it, ma it makes it makes him palatable in a lot of ways. Um, I, I like him a lot. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if people immediately gravitate to him. Because now we have, like, a bunch of different Inquisitor options. We just got two new ones. The next one being Reva, of course. Um, let's just go straight to her. Reva is uh, not just an Inquisitor, but is an apprentice, which I think is freaking weird. I'm not sure I approve of that. But <laughs> um, this one is, you know, I guess she has the kind of targeting ability almost. Well, ability is not right to say, but like kind of like Ochi Bestoon, you choose a character at the beginning of the game. And then you after that chosen character is activated, you must activate Reva if you can. And then after you do that, you can you get basically a fast hands on one of her di character dice. Which means that you got a 66% chance, since she's got a plus two and a blank on her, uh, to hit something that is immediately resolvable on one die. You know, it, uh, the numbers go higher, obviously, if in the in the second die. Um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about her. The the plus two gives me pause. I hate modifiers, yeah. especially on my bigger character. Yeah, um, but I know I know that's there to balance out the ability because the ability would be ridiculous if it was a two, two, three, for yeah. one. If it had been a one, just a one melee, I mean, would we feel better about it? Maybe, I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, mm. that's a good question. <laughs> um, it's kind of hard to say. Um, what what pains me on some level is that because there's this plus two on her, let's say you roll two melee sides on the activation and then. You know, well, okay. We should note, it's a may. It is a may. It's not a must, and or it's not a must to, you resolve or remove or something like that, like Nita or something like that, right? So, you if you roll into like a three and a plus two, you don't have to resolve the three. You can, you know, resolve. You can try to wait and resolve it as five, uh, and so on. So, I don't know. She's okay. I'm not as excited about her overall comparatively to. Um, fifth brother yeah agreed but. well and i always just look at it as you know once you go over that 15 point mark um you know the obviously the smaller ones like fifth brother has a lot more options for yeah. pairings and then once you go over that 15 point you have this this is supposed to be the person that carries your team so yeah all right so the sun this guy's a freaking behemoth sort of i don't know maybe <laughs> but this dude is all about the indirect. He, you can get him an extra die. Seems really, really good overall. Since he's got a four side, he's dealing indirect to himself uh, to get some of those bigger sides off. But I don't know. What are you feeling about this dude? So it, it seems like there's a lot of debate online with him. 
but it feels like the ones that don't like him haven't played him a whole lot because the people who have been playing him are raving about him. Yeah. Um, the fact that you can do you know up to twelve damage with just character dice alone is pretty bonkers. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like, I mean, you almost imagine it. Um, like if you've resolved one of his character dice as a four, it's almost like he's had he, he's got an emperor on him. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you can at least resolve the other two at all. I mean, it, I don't know. It feels like that's pretty powerful once he gets his third die. But then again, of course, he's immediately susceptible. Well, I mean, as any character, as any sizable character is, is always any everything is susceptible to removal. So does he become the target for removal? And how does that work? The fact that he deals damage to himself. I don't know. Maybe it's all right. We're definitely seeing more uh, opportunistic usage of the indirect cost in this set. We'll we'll see that throughout. Well, and the other thing to note, which I, I, the sides are so big, like they're great with general, great with oh yeah. So I mean, even if it is an indirect, I mean that could be a four for one resource. That could be a force destruction of a four cost or less support yeah and that's where like the 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 sun tarkin idea is probably a pretty good one put yeah, a path to mastery on him that's the one i've played this yeah. far and it, it felt pretty good yeah and it's like with path to mastery you just pull tardy training right yeah yeah and then he then he has i mean it, it's interesting like it, do after abilities like this or there, is there any just to make sure? Like, is there any precedent for having? You know, because he start does he start with one resource on the card because you play? Uh, this path to mastery does read you may pl you may play the card on the character. So yeah, that should work, I guess. I, I believe somebody already specified. Okay, that's been specified. Things, I clarified. think so. I, I have to go back, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's if that were not the case, if that got if that ruling were changed um, that, you know, you can't have after abilities and set up or something like that, like that or something to that with a character like that. I don't know that it's not an after setup ability. It's an after you play a card. So I don't know, whatever. If, if it's, if it's the way it is, it's the way it is. Okay. Weak mind. Um, a curse that doesn't require a witch. How about that? I, <laughs> love this card yeah <laughs> how did well, i and, how did i know you would <laughs> and not even like uh, so uh i mean we've been talking about the uh watch your career decks this is perfect for that it's a zero cost oh, yeah. you That's can a turn a die every turn um i played a game last night against with ball versus vader and i threw two of these on vader and it was disgusting <laughs> it's just like yes <laughs> I can see well, that. Well, because Maul, Maul has a discard and a two discard side. I roll out, I hit a two discard, I discard two of his cards, and he rolls out, I, I focus. Yep. And it's a 50% chance you get to focus it too. Do you like, think, it's pretty gross. Do you think this is another like really good card for uh, Kylo Evazen? Oh, yeah, I think I'd put like, this in there. I think yeah. this goes in there. This probably, I mean, this obviously has to go to Dooku deck. I Oh, yeah, we were talking about that too. I was like, yeah. this is disgusting. Like, I haven't even thought about the implications of using it in an actual witch deck because I just think it's so good. Because <laughs> it's good to help elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is I, a pretty cool card. It's a pretty cool card. Well, because it's, it's a zero-cost, soft mitigation every Re Every, every turn. Yeah. Yeah, this is... um, <laughs> Yeah. I, I kind of I kind of wish this cost one, that it didn't have, you know... <laughs> the the costing zero I think is the worst is like the most questionable part of it's it. It's a zero cost die. Yeah. Like it, it's awesome. Like how <laughs> zero cost dies are not to be trifled with. <laughs> All right, display of power. Um, so this is our first event, villain event. Uh, so this is what this is begins the usage of this mechanic of exhausting an upgrade to do something, um, which I really like. I think this is a great new kind of uh, like. Leveraging this type of mechanic is is really good. Um, so, it, yeah, I I think it's really cool. Um, I have yet to use it because I've had multiple upgrades that exhaust as well. Like, I don't know, like using this on a, like a viper sword or something would be really cool. Yeah, 
that's I mean pretty clearly the Viber Sword is gonna be a really good one for it. <laughs> but yeah. will this will this break the chain of set name cards that never get used? Um. <laughs> oh yeah, I yeah. I think this will get played. I I, I just yeah. haven't toyed around with it much. The yeah the treating it like when you think about like the the concept of reach right the the notion that you know you're you're able to uh, grab extra damage out of your hand as um, this you know our our often our constru- our construction of such is kind of like it it needs to be one resource and one card to get two damage oftentimes um, there are and there are variations upon that but we tend to ex- uh, expect that if something, if the expected value of of something is greater than that, then um, in other words, you're spending you know one resource and one card to get more than two damage. You feel pretty good about that. So there's, I think, a like display of power has a fairly reasonable like expected value should be often better than two, it's, if you're doing it on big upgrades. Um, so yeah, absolutely. That's where that's where I'm kind of like I think this is interesting and it's better than most other, uh, most other event named right or set named events that we've seen <laughs> in this respect. But but then of course we'll see in just a second the two big blue upgrade yep. exhaust to do something. So yeah, you're, so you're you're having to get a little key with it one way or the other. One way or another, right? Yes, yeah, so you get you have to choose. You have to you know take options. All right, so force destruction. Um, this is removing. It's one cost, and it's removing blue dice showing damage to discard a support from play. So this is support hate. Uh, I mean, this, what's the similarity of this to some of the other support hate we've seen from FFG days? Um, excuse me. Well, vandalize was what removed that many character or dice. Yeah, or dice. dice remove that many dice or remove so X have dice to remove, to remove like an X four. Support. You'd have to remove. Four dice to remove a four cost support. Yeah. This is remove Vader's four for one, which you can't pay for now anyways because you have to spend one to use yeah. this. So. Yeah. So there's, it's definitely better than a vandalize in that respect. Um, there's other. And then there's what? What is it? Sabotage. We have to discard that many cards from your hand. Yeah. Yeah, and that's on the reprint list. So you'd have to discard like four cards. So it's basically you discard your whole hand. Yeah. Get rid of it. I feel like this. As far as support hate goes, other than DM, is probably cops. Yeah, I mean, other than, like, Overload, which was the best way of getting rid of BB-8 that nobody used. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Overload. Yeah. Which was a great card. I mean, relatively speaking, that was a better card than people give it credit for, you know, in the meta that we had for, you know, a while. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. So, yeah, Force Destruction is probably going to it's gonna see play for sure. It, yeah, if you're if you're running a blue aggro deck and you hate Tuscan Camps, yeah, throw this yeah, you better throw this in your deck. <laughs> I mean, like it, it's definitely it definitely has to be an Invader or a Sun deck. Like there's just with the three and the four sides, you have to. Yeah, I mean, well, you can also it would also be fine with like um, even Palpatine could use this, but you could all, you could foresee other other characters you know going going this way. Oh well, yeah, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, and it doesn't have to be characters. Well, and, uh, yeah, exactly. So you've got. But <laughs> but it's it's auto with those two. Yeah, just because of their yeah, size. for sure. Um, I really like this next card. Hate grows in you. I think this is a legitimate card for um a a variety of different decks now. It seems like. Um, it's in my ball deck. Yeah, it's it's it's. The easy include in the new Maul Savage uh, deck. I mean, that just it's kind of obvious, but it also makes sense in you know a variety of different things. So I think it's kind of I think it's pretty cool. I like this one. Um, but this is follows in the the tradition now of di- of creating these uh, kind of color identity cards um, where you know you have to show certain types of die sides in order to get a certain type of effect. But I think these are kind of undervalued overall when you think about it because it, it, you just it just they're they're high value but very situational. So that's I mean why they are justifiable at the zero cost most of the time, right? Is that they are very situational. But there are better situations than others, and this is one where I feel like that there's going to be some uh, some decks that really like this card. Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's a niche card, but it's a good card. Yeah, it's going to be cool. 
Mercy doesn't defeat the enemy. Like it. It's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you think of this? This is like remove one blue die showing damage to remove up to two dice showing a combined value of three or less. It's like, well, okay. I like that it doesn't specify the amount of damage. So yeah. you could, if you have a pay side and you want to either play removal or pay for that, it's good. Yep. Um, if you're playing the sun and you're like, I don't want to just do two indirect, you go. But yeah, um, so that that's kind of nice. The and it also could be uh, that plus two on Reva if it's just sitting out there. Yep. yep. Yeah. But it, obviously, it has to be three or less, so that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of funky because when I compare this to thinking about like, okay, you know, your stand some of your standard, I'll remove one of my dice to remove one of yours. The the gold standard of he doesn't like you or you know, even expunge weakness or, uh, in blue, or, I mean, there's a variety of them at this point, right? Hold fast measure for measure. Um, do you feel good paying one to get two dice at that point? Okay. Maybe. I mean, that's, that's where I'm kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. It's like always going from zero to one is a big deal. And so is really, is it worth it? to be playing a card that I pay one for, but gets an extra die out of. I'm not sure. No, I, I agree. I, I don't think this is an auto two of in every deck. Yeah. Maybe one. And so I, I don't know. It's, it's it depends on the deck. I, I could see like, you know, the reasons why the cards like dark rage would make this card make more sense because you're going to have some, a bunch of, it's entirely possible that early in the game, you could have like some ones that you just don't want to use. Or that you'd rather would, you know, you're going to have out there, but you'd rather use for something else. This That's where it, it begins to make more sense. It has to be a low-value die. Oh, another one? Another one? We, that's actually really the, the another interesting case. Well, this would be force assistance. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's two there's two damage sides on that. If it rolls, I mean, I'll, sure, I'll get rid of that. <laughs> But we, yeah, were, exactly. but we were already doing that, you know, typically with with uh, you know, with stuff like Kylo Evazan and whatnot. Um, so who knows? Maybe it's OK. But sanction. This is um, almost like a uh, <laughs> almost like the blue version of a headstrong at this point. Um, but it, it focuses only on character dice. Um, it also has the, the weird capacity of. Um, Let's say in the event that you're playing against two Tuscan camps and they both activate and <laughs> there's four Tuscan Raider dice out there, I'll do, I'll do that all day, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's worse than a Headstrong because it's only character. It's better than a Headstrong because it's not after they activate and then it has that odd potential to hit, you know, three plus dice. Of, well, like and, if Sun, and if Sun is, like, really prevalent... Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just smack him. <laughs> That's true. It's a good anti sentence. Yeah, -sent yeah it, putting... I mean, it just, you know, kills I... my dreams of the Gungans coming back and rolling out eight <laughs> Gungan dice. <laughs> well, and that's another thing. Like, yeah, I mean, imagine imagine going up against, you know, a tra like, obviously we don't have these in the meta anymore, but like Trandoshan Hunters or, or uh, you know, multi non-uniques. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that would have that would have wrecked Trandos back. In the day. Oh yeah, right. That would have been pretty great. Pretty great. It would have had to be much slower. Well, at any rate, sanction seems okay. Um, I think it'll make it, it's gonna it'll be interesting to see how it uh, kind of percolates into the villain blue deck, uh, which has historically had to rely upon your powers of weak old man and beguile once that became reprinted in order to get F, gain some efficacy. Um, I could definitely see this replacing, you know, if you were playing two Beguile before, I think it's an easy, okay, I'll split 1-1. One, one. Um, oh, yeah, sure. But is it better than Beguile in all cases? I don't know. Don't think so. No. But, uh, Shroud of Darkness. I don't know about you. I don't like this card. Tell me tell me why I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> I don't mean, know. You need, to, you need to talk to DJ Claro. I've seen it in, like, eight of his decks already. <laughs> I mean, what's there's some interesting aspects to this. Like if you're constantly turning dice and kind of forcing them to re-roll, then gaining that one damage, like okay, if I expect, it, but it's only one damage a turn. So if yeah. I'm spending two points to do that, and I'm it, it, the game has to go like maybe four rounds. 
before I really feel like I get a, a sufficient value out of this, as opposed to like Path to Mastery getting me a one resource less card, you know, a card and a resource out of it. Hmm. I don't know. Well, you've got. Uh, I, I've already forgot. I always forget the name of the plot. The three, the two cost red plot that, that if you have three health left, you're dead. Oh, yeah. So I mean, this has to go three rounds and work three times to even equal that, basically. But this, yeah. but this could hit shields, so it's I, I don't know. It's I'm not a huge fan of it. I probably yeah. won't play it. Yeah. Sight. Especially in the place of path. But yeah. yeah, it's but yeah, to me it's like comparable to path. Um, I don't. Yeah, but that's that's just me. Whatever. Scythe. Uh, okay. This is that. I guess the uh, Inquisitor transport. Yeah, from Obi Wan the show. Uh, Turning a die, to, special turns a die to a side showing a blank, and then you get to turn an Inquisitor or Sith die any side. So it's like having a, it's like having a weak mind, uh, and the focus for yourself. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> um, seems okay. I, yeah, I, yeah, I haven't taken a big look at this card, but I mean, the, the, it doesn't, it's not horrible. Why, why it looks good, is because it's a one cost. If it were a two cost, I don't think that this gets any look. But because Absolutely. it's a one cost. This becomes very interesting. Again, anytime you have a one cost die, you should be like, "Oh, what does that do?" And so that's that's why it seems like it's all right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll just, it'll be interesting to see how it ma manages to make it into action. So cool. Uh, Double bladed saber. Uh, it's, this is a three cost redeploy weapon when it's on an inquisitor, and then it rolls back into the pool if you've resolved it, showing damage. And then you get to remove, resolve it immediately again. Otherwise, you remove it. Seems pretty good. I mean, I can't see with with no pay side, and as long as it's on, I mean, it's in an Inquisitor deck. This seems like it's an auto to include for an Inquisitor deck, just period, and doesn't even you don't even think about it. That's probably right. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly better than the other, what was it, the, there was an Inquisitor lightsaber that was released a few sets ago. That's kind of never, I mean, it barely made it into Inquisitor decks. Yeah, it, um, was, too, it was too cost, but it, it was a little funkier. It didn't yeah. have a three side, though. This one doesn't have a three side. But yeah, but it, it didn't have, the other one didn't have hopes. redeploy, right? Well, and the hope on this one is it does four damage, or two damage and gets you a resource. Or if you whatever. expect, I mean, if we're trying to get you know, to parity of cost, this it has like four sides that once that it, when they're resolved three times in total, you feel like you've gotten your money's worth. Those being the, the damage sides and the, the one resource side. So in theory, this pays itself back in like a turn and a 1.5 turns. And then you're into positive value territory. If you get the second, like let's say you resolve it for damage on the first turn it's out and then you resolve it for damage on the second turn and you're able to resolve it on the roll in like that just seems that that seems pretty dad gum good uh the fact that it has redeploy feels very good i like i can't really i can't really complain about this guy yeah i agree force retaliation um yeah three well man this is a big old big old honking ability um but it is villain only it isn't a it's four cost. It's obvious where it's supposed to go. <laughs> it's like it's meant for. It's kind of meant for. Uh, well, it's meant for the big boys. Um, yeah, because you want to. <laughs> but here, but here, you got an exhaust thing. Yeah, it only does one damage. So I mean, where the or I guess it could do two to three damage, but uh, on the exhaust. Well, but... it could. Yeah, I mean, if it if it hit if it gets removed. Well. Actually, um, if it, if your character that rolls in gets headstronged, then it, you basically tap this and do two damage. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. No, it is cool, but I was thinking about display of power from earlier. So. Oh yeah, well sure, sure. So that's what I'm saying. Like you got your two four drops, but they all do something kind of yeah. interesting that you want to exhaust them for. The fact that this also has a three disrupt is like. <laughs> Okay, cool. So it's very close. It's very close to Force Storm, yeah. except uh, when that one had two discard instead of three disrupt, and then it had a special instead of the two money. Yeah. So. No, I like it. I've been playing it. Cool. So. Yeah. 
Um, we are to Villain Red now. We'll take a moment for a second and welcome a bunch of people in the chat here, by the way. Looks like uh, we, have a, we have a few, so uh, thanks for showing up, everybody. Um, but let's just get right back to it, though. Uh, Gar Saxon, this seems pretty slick. <laughs> the question is, is he a trap? Um, some people seem pretty high on him. He's, a, he's you know, got big sides, but that ability for a 17-pointer... I mean, am I really willing to, you know, <laughs> am I really willing to sacrifice, like, b building my deck around other things that are going to d direct a board state as opposed to this? Um, I totally understand why it has to be a cost of one rather than zero, but... Oh, if it was yeah. zero, I don't yeah, think he'd be really Yeah, it'd be, yeah so we, I mean, again, just damage... The difference between a zero and a one is absolutely gargantuan, <laughs> and in this game. Um, I mean, I think, like you said, I think he's good. I like him with Pyre, but I think you have to. You don't build the deck around him. You build. You can put him in the deck that would already be doing what it wants to do with the events. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> Because, like, uh, I mean, when you play Pyre, you want the taking the charge, you want the Scorched Earths, you want those things. So then right. if he's with them, then you already are just tacking on the extra damage on top of it. Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't... It doesn't excite me. <laughs> yeah, I, I played one game with him. I had fun. Okay, I, I mean, I don't, know, I don't know if, you know, he's going to be groundbreaking or anything, yeah. but he's, he's interesting. And his die's good, and then later, you know, with... Um, Whatever the leader upgrade for one. I want to make a, a quick note here as well. Um, I am really impressed, at, especially at the characters. You know, we, we have, we're beginning to see a lot more flavor text. <laughs> and, oh, uh, yeah. and that is, you know, I, I know that that's been something uh, Elrath and I have talked about, that there needs to be more of that um, because that's part of the fun is the flavor and whatnot, and the characters are really where that needs to be, and we see a lot more of that this set, I think, than we've ever seen before. And I think that's really cool. So kudos to ARH designers. Uh, the card that is an intense Norman hater, uh, General Kalani. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bring your SD back with this card. Yeah, well, I think, I think it, it, when this was designed, it had not been decided that SD should be banned. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but but even so, I mean, there's there's plenty of opportunities for card drawing through, you know, other means. So uh, the question is, like, does this the, like, is this good enough to see play without that text at to where when he does come across a, a deck that likes to draw, you know, that he's going to go, ooh yay, <laughs> do that extra damage. Let's go. Um, yeah. I like Kalani. I think he's fun. Uh, the two resource sides is neat. Uh, team up of each other droids, so he's like kind of the like the old Grievous. Um, we'll see if we can get a thirty-two point deck out of it, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, what the uh, the droid decas? Those are eleven elite, right? Those are eleven elite. So you could so you could do two droid yeah, decas and two droid decas in, in one Kalani. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, you know, he just sits there and soaks up the indirect damage from the droid as they try to do their work. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And he has two resource sides, which they generally lack resources since they don't have any. Right. Two focus is pretty good too. I don't know. It'd be interesting. I don't know if it's yeah. any good. But that's yeah, that's probably where I would start. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, is he a strict? I, like, here's a kind of an interesting question: Is he a strict upgrade from the new General Grievous that we had a couple sets ago? And that's uh, that's kind of where I wonder: Is like, you know, General Grievous had a? Um, maybe we should bring him up. Should we bring General Grievous up? Is that worthwhile? Well, what is he? Eleven thirteen. Yeah, He's, he he deals damage better, but he doesn't have team up, right? Yeah, that's the thing. So we're gonna bring it. We're gonna bring up Grievous here. So General Grievous uh, from Unlikely Heroes. He does. He's eleven fourteen. So he's cost more already. Um, but then he doesn't have the team up, and then uh, but he has the focus. Uh, well, he's eleven thirteen now because they they did. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it's not actually it's not actually listed in the uh, the DB exactly, but yeah, the, then being able to roll the dealing and indirect yourself to roll a droid die on a card you control into your pool is pretty good. I mean, that's kind of like a he's kind of like a three die dude at that point. So I don't know. It, to me, like I don't know. It's, it doesn't. I'm not sure Kalani is a strict upgrade. Um, I think if you're wanting to run elite Droidekas, he's better because you can roll a run two of them. You can't do a three. Yeah, I mean, well, sure. Yeah, I guess that then the question is like, is it better to run with, you know, I mean, obviously if you want to run Droidekas, yeah, you're probably running Kalani. If you're in the position where you're run, you're more. Well, if you're if you're running droid supports, it's grievous. I guess that's what I guess that's the difference in, in many respects. It's just that. Okay. Uh, our our deceitful viceroy, Mister Newt Gunray. Everybody's excited about this dude. Whoops, that's my bad. Sorry about that, fellas. Get back down. I'm gonna give you everybody whiplash here. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Newt Gunray, eleven points. This is a reprint from the Legacies Newt Gunray die. Um, so my my man Josh over here. Uh, is just uh, pretty much just fell over in with joy when he saw that this was back. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he seems all right. What do you uh, you've, have you thought of anything other than Vader to put him in at this point though? Um, I saw um, I think it was Gringo had him with Maul. Okay. Just to kind of do the same thing, try to get the extra indirect off of Maul and. Uh... Really, it was it was kind of more of a burn deck to be honest. Than oh, interesting. Hmm. Um, what? I don't know. I mean, he's in. <laughs> he's interesting. Well, the the funny thing about Newt on some level is that you know, okay, we think about him almost like he's part of a, a pseudo mill strategy, like with Vader even. Um, but the fact is, is that he's only reducing the hand size. He's so you're actually you're losing out on certain opportunities to discard cards that way, right? So, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's it's got to be worth it. I mean, often I mean, card advantage is life. That is so gross. Oh yeah. Dude. Like that's you see that roll out and you're like, well, crap. Yep. Yep. It'll be it'll be interesting to see if where exactly he continues to pop up. If we can find some additional means by which to um, u- utilize him well. Oh, we got our Moff Jerjerod, though. That's next here. He seems pretty nice. Uh, not. Uh, <laughs> not not a fan of this card, I am. Uh, he is a, a standard leader, but his, like, his die sides are kind of, ugh, really? Um, I'm, I don't know. Am I just wrong about this? Like, I can't. I don't really feel like I like this guy yet. Not for I enough. mean, for Mill? He's not horrible because then he has three discard sides, basically, right? Yeah. Sort of. Then, <laughs> well, I mean, it says remove yeah. one of your dice showing a resource to either discard the top card of a deck or discard a random card. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty strong. <sighs> I don't know. I I tried him in like a three wide uh, Imperial, like with him and what was it, him and. Uh, who, who are the other ones we have now? We well, have if we're talking red leaders for like the purpose of a, you know, yeah. cap ship deck, it's like it's Nita Ozzel, Jerjerod. Yeah, and that's a needle Nita Ozzel. I, I was trying to go to Piet, but I was like, the Piet ro- rotated out. Yeah, we we don't have Piet yet. <laughs> yeah, we need to bring Piet back. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I I think if you're wanting to go wide, like I know there used to be some villain wide uh, mill decks. I think he'd be pretty interesting in that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm just not enthused with him yet. But I I mean I can see why like the flexibility of the power action on one of those resource sides because it's kind of like oh well you can you know imagine if he said oh uh, you may resolve his resource sides as discard sides would you feel would we just feel better about that? Well, power action is a slightly different tempo set for that, but okay, you know maybe we're maybe well, we can. I mean, you- You'd have to change the plus one to just a regular resource. Well, yeah, I, I realize that, but I'm just saying, like, just from, from kind of an analogy perspective, it's a th- in, in value analysis, right? Yeah, I mean, I think it has to be pair action because he's, you can't have him doing both. Yeah. Dice. yeah. I don't know. I, I, he's probably terrible, but 
but I'm yeah. sure someone I'm sure someone who wants to build a mill deck with it. Yeah, I'm ten, ten points a lead is not horrible. It, yeah, it, I mean it comparatively to other ways that mill has been buffed, like if you're gonna play mill, it's pretty clear where you're going at this point, so I'm not sure I'm not sure he I'm not sure this guy has a place. Yeah, that's fair. You know, that's that's my only well, not my only concern, but that is thing that comes to mind. There's Fire. probably just better any way yeah. you go. So. Yeah, yeah. Fire across the galaxy. Well, okay. Zero cost removal. That's good. Removes an opponent's die showing a value of one. Okay, so that's simple. You know, you'll feel... <laughs> so it doesn't get rid of specials. And it's, I mean, because you can't... It's not one or less, so it's one. You can hit the Vibrosword one. Okay, great. <laughs> and it can hit that that terrible th uh, one discard off of it. I guess that's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's literally to get rid of resources, right? Yeah, like... it, it's following in the tradition of the zero cost. It has to kind of have an additional cost. Put that in scare quotes there by doing something somewhat decent for the opponent, like strike a deal gives them a resource, or sometimes multiple. This is going to get him a card. Yeah, I mean, if I if I'm running vi villain mono red, it so, might be like number twenty six to thirty of my cards. I'm so not like a huge fan of it. But where I'm... where this does funny uh, has an extra funny effect though is with Kalani. Oh yeah. <laughs> so like if they if now it's a may they don't have to draw the card, but if uh, if they do Kalani will just yeah take a damage yeah. Okay. There you go. So there's that. There's that little combo. Um, Imperial Justice. This card seems good because it uh, you spot red character, choose a symbol, and it's not on your dice. It's the entire pool. Uh, deal at one indirect for each to each opponent for each die showing the chosen symbol to max of four. That seems pretty yeah. good. Yeah, one for four damage. Seems if you can get it for the four damage, even if you feel like you're getting, you're gonna play. Will you play it when you have three? Oh yeah, I think you would, right? I mean, I mean, what is uh, everybody profits? You yeah. give them a resource. It's so it's one for three indirect. This is one for well, three indirect. Well, and plus, so you don't have to give it to them. I mean, I'm gonna have to throw it in every red deck now because inevitably I'm gonna roll. Six blanks at some point. Oh yeah, I mean this is one for four for you. I, this this is one for four for me every turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fun. All right, well those are our first twenty cards. We've already been at this now for forty minutes, so two minutes a card is not bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah. we we may we may want to break this up into a couple of things, uh, perhaps. Uh, sinister motives. Um, we're on to. Still in villain, but we're doing all right. Sinister motive seems all right. Um, discard a card from your hand to remove a die showing value equal to that card's cost, or up to two die showing a combined value equal to that card's cost. If you spot two characters that share no subtypes, what a massive text bomb! But uh, okay. <laughs> uh, if you're playing Tarkin Sun, you play it because they don't share subtypes. Yep. So there's yeah, this is interesting. So you know what this what this kind of reminds us of is. Um, uh, sinister Peace, right? Yep. Um, so it's like Sinister Peace, which costs zero, removed one die, but you discarded an extra card from your hand. This is... And this seems actually like, okay, I think I'm... I can... If I was willing to do zero for one die and discard a card in my hand, am I willing to go just the one resource to get the two? I think I am. Yeah, but I don't... It's loses its value if you only hit one so that's where yeah. like i don't think you play this unless you have two characters that yeah sure yeah 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 well i have to i have to hit the the two dice to really make this worthwhile the fact that it has the option to getting one in a pinch okay cool but um yeah so niche card pretty neat admiral's orders this is our villain red plot um have you have you figured this one out yet? <laughs> this is a set set. It's kind of a a tempo uh, boost. Set the plot aside to activate any number of supports in the order of your choice, and then the other action is and these are actions, right? Um, yes. 
spot a leader to exa exhaust this plot to reroll one of your support dice. So you've got the thing that you'll want to do every turn. And then you have the uh, once a game thing, which could theoretically be very cool. <laughs> Yeah, and I do like that it says supports. So, I mean, yep. if you have Tuscan camps and stuff like that, you can roll all those in. It's not just vehicles. I think it's, you know, kind of notable to realize with this that you can do with with Nita and Ex Executor. Um, that's significant because uh, the uh, Executor text, of uh, which we'll see here in a second, the after resolving a red leader die, you may exhaust the support to roll a set aside. Um, that will trigger, but you don't actually activate the executor as part of Admiral's orders, which is interesting. So you just kind of have to recognize that. But I'm not, I, although, here's the thing I don't know if you're really going to play Admiral's orders above and beyond certain other things that, like Kuat Drive Yards, for instance. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I'm not sure it's really that good. But the executor is pretty sweet. Um, I uh, I would love to say more about this card, but I probably shouldn't. <laughs> um, but I do really like where this card ended up, and uh, that it's uh, that the fact that it brings back planetary bombardment is pretty cool. I think that's so pretty sweet. I did have my favorite play with this card hmm. yesterday. I uh, do tell. Had Crucial intel, three resources, yep. and I had a red die out, a leader die out there. So I took the action, did the red die, got to roll out the bombardment, and then I got to resolve it to win the game. Oh, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Excellent. So, And the best part is is it was a red leader die that I stole with um, uh, inhibitor chip. Oh, that's disgusting. You should be ashamed <laughs> of yourself there. It felt really good. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Well, the it does cost seven, um, can get reduced by Kuat Drive Yards and other things. It's not like it doesn't have the other capital ship text that says that, you know you can't reduce the cost of playing this card. Let's let's, let's just bring back Dell. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it does. I think it was wise. I, I'll I'll hand it to them. You know, I think it was wise to make this ship like it was like it is to avoid the problem of like Garandon inflation um <laughs> for eight yeah you know well and it's and it's cool because you have a seven cost that you paid for that doesn't get auto removed with that strong yeah. so yeah yep yeah, that is pretty cool you lose some tempo but eh, that's okay uh imperial checkpoint i don't know i kind of like this card um when i see stuff like this i kind of compare it to something like you know senate chamber and uh this has, instead of certain text, which, you know, you might argue that Senate Chamber is maybe is the gold standard and is a wonderful, wonderful card. Probably good that it doesn't exist anymore. Um, this trades, like, stuff like that for tempo. Um, it looks a little bit like... In fact, this actually... Is this... No, this isn't the die from uh, Imperial Officer. It definitely is not. Yeah, because it was a But it's similar. Four. If it... Yeah, was it a focus? A focus? I know it was a two for one. Yeah, I, know it was a I think it's exactly the same, except it has two focus and no pay side. Yeah, two focus and no pay side, and then doesn't have the <laughs> activation. It's also a focus. location. It's also yeah, location. which which makes you like, oh man, can I play it with Owen somehow? Hmm. <laughs> how, how do I get that Iden Owen? Iden Owen else. jank, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds terrible. Oh yeah, man, that would be. Yeah, it's impo in fact, it may be impossible. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, but I do like the card overall. Strangely enough, because I mean, two cost supports are always interesting to me. Uh, Seeker droid. So I haven't really messed with this at all. Um, Exhausted support. Resolve one of your dice showing a discard to deal one damage to a character if a non-event card was discarded this way. Ready the support. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah, I mean, do you see this making its way into your decks at all? Probably not. Maybe an Afro deck, just because it's another droid yeah. that you can drop. But I, I don't know. It's interesting, but I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, it's part of the mill kill 
contingent at this point because it's you have to resolve a die showing a discard to deal a damage. Okay. So, I mean, where where does it go to? I mean, does it put, I I don't know. Like, it, does it go into a mall deck? Well, you have to be playing red with mall. Yeah. Okay. Do you put it at? Excuse me. Do you put it in? You know. I don't. I mean. Red leader decks. I, I, I don't know. Doesn't doesn't feel like it has a place. Uh, a straight, Gerard deck. Yeah. <laughs> the Jared Gerard deck. Stranded. Um, I kind of hate this card. <laughs> I it's it's full of theme, but I feel like it's kind of like uh no, I don't think I'm ever gonna play this one. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be blue so you can put it with the Inquisitors. <laughs> all the time. Well, you know, you could always play an Inquisitor deck that runs one inquisitor and a red actually i'm gonna always play that against you because you'll always have some blanks in the pool thanks the the thanks yeah it's 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 <laughs> happening it's happening the anti-norm tech there yeah let's go now i i i i just usually need yeah, the best anti-norm tech is like the dune c just make just keep making yeah. me discard <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> if i have to discard more i'm just in trouble <laughs> uh light repeating blaster um, I kind of love this card. I think it's great. Yeah, it's a it's a good weapon. <laughs> this is wonderful. It's redeploy. It's got four resolvable sides and text that enables you to activate. Or after you activate it, the character you get to resolve it. So you have a sixty six percent chance of getting massive, like not maybe massive, but very good extra value. Seems really good. I'm I'm pretty fine with it. <laughs> Yeah, nothing to add. Seems good. I I kind of want to be able to play this with um, uh, Cara Dune. That way, I will never have <laughs> the blank will be able to resolve. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so, good. That'd be uh, but I can't because it's villain. Uh, military strategist. Um, once again, I kind of love this card. I, I think this is kind of cool. Yeah, this is a card. After I have some more time, I'm gonna figure out a deck to put it in. Yeah. I think it just makes yeah it it kind of makes sense um, to to go in you know some red damage decks um, like it, it the power action is pretty swell and it kind of mitigates the fact that those modifiers may not get um, resolved right and that's and that's kind of the, the the trick is that if you if you're you have to kind of ignore the fact that. I mean that you're gonna get probably they should, your, your modifier side might not get resolved. Okay, fine, but you're gonna get the the indirect because if you're not resolving it, then let you're probably showing another damage side, which means you're you're gonna get you're gonna get one indirect out of it one way or another. So the fact then that it has zero blanks, I mean, jeez, like sign me up, feel good with that. Yeah. All right, uh, IGRM Thug Droid. We're into the yellow villain here. Seems okay. Um, seven point access to yellow. We've had that before with the Narshada Thief, but this one has a die. Um, yeah, the Loyalist too. And the Loyalist as well, yeah. So, okay. Well, I guess it's all right. Uh, I like it. Yeah? The fact that it's uh, Guardian is cool. I've been playing it, and I replaced uh, Vizsla and played it in my Hondo deck. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. Put two of them in there. It's fun if you get to roll out Hondo with, what is that, five dice, six dice, without any upgrades. <laughs> that's, oh, that is, that's cool. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, all right. That's kind of neat, yeah. Hmm. I like you it. just got to make sure they get killed before Hondo does, otherwise they suck. You can self-destruct them. Uh, there, that that card is in those decks. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's another card here that that is in neutrals. We may not even get to it tonight. Guarded. Um, yeah, yeah. I was debating that. That seems okay with the deck, but I don't think we'll get to it tonight. But still. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty dis decent sides. I mean, for what it, for what you're getting, like seems fair. Uh, the fact he didn't have a resource is kind of meh, but okay, whatever. You can play greed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right, Jabba the Hutt, the big man himself. This card is really good, it seems. 
Seems to me. Parallel die with the Convergence Java. So it's got the plus two resource side. And you get to remove a die to roll a Bounty Hunter or a Scoundrel die on one of your cards in play into your pool. Well, sign me up. My gosh. Suddenly, those cheaper, the cheap yellow dice, like, hustling. <laughs> like, sure, let's go. <laughs> yep. And, I mean, it's nice because it's one of your dice, so it could be any dice. So yep. you're stuck on a blank. Okay, cool. I'll remove that to bring something else out. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, even if it, if, like, does it make sense to bring Jabba's own dice back, you know, for, for more? I mean, is that good enough? Cause, Potentially. Yeah. If you got the two focus and two money. Because the, the thing I'm wondering is, like, do you play this with Maul in an extremist campaign? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a well, terrible Well, I mean, idea. you know, I, I, well, if, if you have one Jabba dice with the two focus out there, yeah, yeah you've got a resource side, you yeah. know, could be good. Yeah, interesting stuff. And there's plenty. There are other scoundrel support dice as well that are pretty good. So, you know, early early game, you're bringing Jabba's dice back for ramp. Late game, you're you know putting out other uh, scoundrel dice that are going to do damage. That seems pretty good. Bring back Entourage. Bring back Entourage. Uh, Maul. This new Maul has no parallel, but this is. He is unparalleled. Uh, this is a freaking cool card. It shows off one of the other new mechanics, of course, that the uh, multicolored characters. Um, so he gains blue <laughs> at the beginning of the game. So he's a yellow character, but gains blue, which means you spot him as a blue. Makes it very interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, leans into the the self damage capacity and uh and then his indirect his power action of dealing indirect to number of difference in uh, difference in the number of cards in hand okay i think i can handle that i mean i don't do it very often but i definitely have gotten poor indirect several times well say. when you're playing against mill that's yeah. entirely possible to get three a turn out of that yeah i uh i really like this character a lot yeah a lot to be commended for this weirdo. Um, yeah, definitely one of the most exciting decks to kind of immediately come out of the gate would be Maul Savage and Watch Your Career with great interest. Um, just seems really, really interesting to play. Kind of maybe glass cannony, but seems worth it. Well, and to note, I think you've already said this in one of the Discord threads, but uh, Guardian with the Savage will get you that, that draw, so... Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. That is true. And that is important. <laughs> you definitely want to be able to do that. Um, Kira. Highly anticipated. This is a villain Kira as opposed to the, what was it, Way of the Force when we got her before? Or was it Across the Galaxy? Uh, across the Galaxy. Okay. okay. Well, then she was um, neutral at that point. But, all right, cool. Kira pairs up with Maul. You can do that. And she also has the uh, dealing damage to yourself and give a benefit. In this case, it's gaining a resource. But it has to be dealt damage to a yellow character for the first time. Uh, each phase. She's got Charm, so you're probably going to be playing Charm Offensive with her. And uh, she's got a power action to remove Charm Token. I think there's, you know, what with the proliferation of new Charm effects and the threat that those are going to uh, suppose upon people. I think that she could have a place. I think she's going to be all right. Oh, I, I like her a lot. I haven't built a deck with her yet, but she's definitely yeah. on my list of yeah. I need to build. Yeah, I mean, just here, I'll remove a charm, deal damage. Sure, no problem. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, Rook Cast. This is uh, one of those characters that doesn't have a matching die, but rolls stuff from set aside. Um, I don't, man, I barely remember. I guess she was, uh, this character was uh, served Maul in like the Clone Wars series, I suppose, right? Is that? Yeah. I don't remember her much either, but yeah, I think she was like one of the lieutenants. Or... Yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, it, and, and she does roll a set aside Maul die, and that is the... Uh, so what would it be? Yeah, the bad mall die. Is that the or is that the spark of hope? No, it's spark of hope die. Ooh, not legacies. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Oh, then you have to run her elite. Otherwise, she's just super command. Well, super commando nine for eleven. That's not bad. Yeah, I mean, so at a non at a non elite, she's basically a Mandalorian super commando that okay. has eleven health. Yeah. That seems pretty good. Now you don't get the the text, but you're probably playing her with a Sith, and thus she'll thus she'll have guardian. All right, that seems pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, like she seems all right. Seems all right. Yeah, I think she's one that I'll look into as well. I haven't. Looked I just into yeah. I mean, it, when I think about like okay, who am I pairing Maul with? And I'm, you know, my mind immediately wants to go to like the Savage, you know the Savage and watch your career, but you can also go Kira. You can also go cast and there's plenty of other 13 pointers to explore with. My, my so. biggest problem with Maul because he's blue is I want blue guards. Yeah. So like, yeah. that's the only reason I haven't looked at Kira or Rook that much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hmm. but I mean, 13, 13 point character, 11 health and potential to do five damage with her dice. Is pretty uh-huh. good. Yeah. Uh, so Zian is interesting uh, in that. Now I don't know how many people will, will kind of know about this character. Um, are you familiar with the the little short like uh, short story? That uh, oh, I she was in the Mandalorian, right? Or am I making that up? No, she's one of the background characters in. Oh no! Wait, no! I'm oh I'm thinking of somebody completely different. Okay, <laughs> Never mind. She was, I thought she was one of the prison no. escapes um, when they go to the, the prison. You're right. You're right. I forgot. I thought this was one of the people that was in uh, Force Awakens in the background of the bar. The, the uh, like with Bazine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I just totally forgot. Okay. Yeah, you're right. This is Mandalorian character. So, yeah, she's the crazy one. <laughs> A little psychotic. So... I like she's an assassin. She's cheap. Maybe she's all right. I mean, I don't know. You, it it uh, seems. I I think the only reason I ever use her is as a cheap character. Yeah. Put something in. Yeah. Because she's not horrible, but I mean, eh. Me. <laughs> I mean, if you if you're in need of the fast hands one damage to take out a character like that's pretty great but like that's I do really like her niche i like her flavor too so. that is true <laughs> crazy twee <laughs> yeah is it twi i guess it'd be twi yeah. all right so we have um a, n- a new downgrade uh Play only if you spot a... This no witnesses. Play if you spot a yellow character so you don't need a bounty hunter for it, even though it is a bounty. After the attached character is defeated, you may resolve one of your dice, increasing its value by two. That's kind of neat. Um, to what extent does this parallel no second chances? Like, no second chances, you're trying to maximize the value out of it, but this, it, but there's a risk to doing so. And uh, this is, and of course that's in blue. This is like a, just a different way of increasing value out of your dice. I don't know. It's kind of neat. Kind of like it. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to play a bounty hunter deck, I'd more than likely put this in. Yeah. Free free card. Free cards. Await the Dawn. This was uh, spoiled a little early. And, uh... This kind of synergizes with the Kira and um, Maul mechanics of doing self, self-inflicted self damage. Spotting yellow character, choose an opponent's die, showing a value of two or more. Um, then you have to deal indirect to yourself equal to the value showing on the die to remove it. So it's like crash landing for yellow, but it has to be... <laughs> uh, it doesn't it's have so to much- be damaged. It's so yeah. So I was gonna say it's so much better than crash landing because yeah. you can get rid of resources. Well, just the shield, two shield, cards, anything. Yeah, the two the two value ones, of course. But well, yeah. yeah. But still. But you you're I, almost invariably willing to take out a two two resource die for taking two indirect damage. Well, I took it. I took it on a Java die. That's why I was thinking it. But yeah, mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. You can deal with the two fo- that dan- the dangerous two focus as well. Yep. So yeah, so it's loses flexibility but gains flexibility. I think it's uh, worthwhile. 
Uh, it is a spot yellow, so you don't forget that. <laughs> Infamy. You have to have... This is a... Uh, you can only have one character in your pool. One, I'm sorry, I misread. Play only if you have exactly one character die in your pool. Uh, dealing indirect to an opponent equal to the number of dice in their pool. So, is this like this? Is like it's kind of like Scorched Earth, right? Yeah, except you don't have to control the battlefield, but yeah. you have to have a character die. In your pool. Exactly one character die in your pool. Okay. <laughs> all right. I mean, that's all right. Yeah, um, I it's, maybe I think you'd have to. It could maybe fit in a deck, but I, I it's, it's so many, so many stipulations. But it would be nice if you're just sitting there with a blank in your pool, and then yeah. the, you know you just watch your uh, opponent just roll out yeah. two Tuscans and a Jedi Temple Guard and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Seems all right. I'm. It's gonna be. It's very situational. And I mean, that does seem to be kind of a theme. Is that they're trying to get to greater situational usefulness, um, but more interesting effects as a result. Uh, the upper hand. There was a card called um, Upper Hand, a blue event in Legacies. It was a starter card uh, in the starter deck. It was in the Obi Wan starter deck. Oh, I'm sorry, not in Legacies. That was in uh, Convergence, rather. Um, the upper hand. Okay. I'm glad they changed it to the upper hand. <laughs> uh, play only if you have more cards in your hand than an opponent, including this card. Deal one unblockable to a character. Look at an opponent's hand and discard a card from it. I mean, seems okay. I mean, you're getting a discard and a damage for one. Okay. Yeah. Pretty standard yeah. value. But you still have to have more cards than they do. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you know, it's... Uh... I don't have it in my mall deck, but I can see it in the mall deck. Yeah, it seems all right. I mean, it, it, it yeah, it seems all right. It does kind of play against mall's power action, though, since it's discarding a card from their hand. And no, 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 that doesn't play against it. It plays with it. It, it. But it goes to the difference. Yeah, so you're discarding one. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. But you get to discard one of theirs, so it keeps it the same. But you have to have more cards in your hand than them. So I guess, really, what you do is you power action and then do it. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Or I guess it doesn't does yeah. it matter. Maybe it doesn't it, matter. It's an, it, actually, you know what? Don't put this in the mall deck because it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. So, yeah. It's not like it's not giving you an advantage in a mall deck. Okay, first light. Uh, this is obviously meant to be played with Kira because the power action is spot Kira to roll one of her character dice in your pool. I, this seems pretty good. Um, yeah, it on seems face. like you don't play it unless you're playing Kira, and yeah. then if you're playing Kira, it seems really good. Yeah. Um, however, it, where it seems to really shine would be like in the um, in the Mall Kira deck, because when you play it, you discard a card from their hand and you draw a card, so it plays right into Mall's power action. Yeah. I might have to take a look at that interaction. I just can't get off the fact that he's blue, too. I yeah. Want that. Yeah, I mean, I, I just can't. It's a, yeah, who knows? It's like, it's a bonus. But we can't limit ourselves to thinking one particular way. Uh, the High Lebon Enforcers. <laughs> I don't remember where these showed up in whatever. Were these in Mandalorian? It's like funny. Yeah, I don't remember them either. Yeah. I mean, they're obviously Mandalorian or Book of Boba Fett, but I, I don't remember either of them. Maybe it was Book of Boba Fett. Maybe that's where they were from. I don't remember. Whatever. They are a two cost, but they have some big sides. Uh, I actually really like these guys. Yeah, this this seems really pretty good. Um, you got yeah. three damage sides, and then the specials remove a die. I mean, come on. And then, it has an after and, activate. Yeah, it has an after activate that rerolls. I mean, whoo, okay, cool. <laughs> Seems pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm all for these guys. Yeah. They're cool. All right, so use Hylobon Enforcers. <laughs> uh, a few more cards before I think we yeah we get into hero. We may just call it a night though, since it's already after midnight. Uh, Dauntless. This is a parallel die with formidable. Remember that card? 
<laughs> yeah, I think this is way better. Yeah, this mirror is way better <laughs> than Formidable. This one's going to see play. Uh, Formidable did see play, but not that often. Um, yeah, this seems pretty dadgum good. Um, I can't really complain about it. Like, it seems very nicely balanced. Not too, not too much, not too little. And it's an ability. And it's an ability. Okay, Which cool. goes good with uh, Watch Your Career with Great Interest. That is true. That is true. <laughs> so, yeah, it's already made it. I'm not sure I, I, I'm not sure if I'm willing to put it as a two of yet, but I like it. Yeah. Yep. Um, Three two sides on a two cost upgrade. Can't yeah. Play. Well, I mean, uh, but like, it feels similar to like Force Valor to me. I'm not sure what, what they, do you think Force Valor is better than this or for, or worse? Hmm. I tend to like it better, but I'm not sure. I like the flexibility of the special from Force Valor, yeah. personally. Um, the, the the dice turning is just way, way, way good uh, to get you what you need. To me, that's I, that's kind of where I... I don't know. That's what I feel, but I'm willing to give up one damage for the one focus, I guess. Yeah, that's for, fair. But... I could see why you would not want to have the plus two from Force Valor and instead prefer what you got here. The two shield side, baller. It's great. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Van Brace F Flamethrower. This card is cool. Um, if only because the artwork is fantastic. <laughs> and uh, it is a, a an, an equipment upgrade, not a weapon. Um I feel like that we got a little confused on some cards where, like, a hammer is a weapon, but a flamethrower is equipment. Makes sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, sure. Okay. Well, at any rate, this is uh, this is a parallel die with the Awakenings uh, flamethrower, right? I, I mean, yeah. It's a. I can't remember which. I mean, it's so. This is the first flamethrower from. Yeah. From Awakenings, but then it's also got the ability of whatever the second flamethrower they made. Uh, the flame projector, right? The flame projector, yeah. Yeah. So I think it's cool that they kind of combined it. In yeah. One. Yeah. So yeah, the result of the dice showing damage is if it were indirect, increasing its value by one, it's pretty cool because making that a five for one indirect is pretty slick. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. And then discard a card. The special being discard a card from play if there's a copy of that card in any discard pile. So, bring what? What does that sound like? Flames of the past. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but then you have to discard the upgrade from play. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess if there's an executor. But, but uh, little kudos to whoever thought of uh, that little uh, <laughs> funny interaction, <laughs> or the, the the connection to flames of the past. <laughs> funny. Good, good work. Um, it's 12.08. We've been at this for a minute, an hour 13. I don't feel bad calling it good for now. If, uh, if that feels good to you, Beacon, I know yeah. we have uh, yeah. family obligations in the morning and we do need to sleep. So, <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, it has been fun doing this with you, sir. And uh, it's, it's always instructive to hear your thoughts on the matter. And maybe we'll get more of this or maybe we'll – if, if you don't have time or I don't have time, maybe if you want to do it with somebody else or if I'll do it with somebody else, if we can't manage to do it together, we'll get her done. Sounds good, man. All right. Well, time. thanks to our people who joined us here. Uh, we had very quiet uh, chat tonight, but that is all right. Thanks for uh, showing up, fellas, and we'll catch you later.